Charmed is a beloved and internationally acclaimed series that captivated audiences with its enchanting narratives of witches, demons, and warlocks. The stellar cast included Alyssa Milano, Holly Marie Combs, Shannon Doherty, and later, Rose McGowan. The storyline revolved around the Hallowell sisters, an extraordinary coven of witch siblings, tasked with confronting supernatural threats, while navigating the challenges of modern-day life in San Francisco. Boasting an impressive eight-season tenure, the series earned the distinction of being the lengthiest television show with an exclusively female lead cast, until Desperate Housewives surpassed it in 2012. However, the show's return, not as a reboot but embroiled in controversies, has left fans disheartened, casting a shadow over the cherished memories associated with the series. How Everything Started In 1998, the WB embarked on a mission to find a new drama series for the upcoming season, turning to spelling television for inspiration. Riding the wave of fascination with witch-themed movies like The Craft or Practical Magic, the production company delved into various mythologies to craft contemporary narratives. Constance M. Birch was entrusted with the task of creating the series, initially hesitant due to prevailing witchcraft stereotypes. However, after immersing herself in Wicca research, she shifted her perspective to depict good witches as ordinary individuals. The concept, initially envisioned in Boston, Massachusetts, transformed into three friends and roommates who were witches. Executive producer, E. Duke Vincent, suggested a focus on family values, emphasizing three sisters who happened to be witches. This concept, now set in San Francisco and descended from a line of witches, garnered approval from the WB's president of entertainment, Suzanne Daniels. The series, initially titled House of Sisters, underwent a transformation and was later aptly renamed Charmed, a suggestion from spelling. Former 90210 actress Shannon Doherty assumed the role of Prue Hallowell, while her best friend at the time, Holly Marie Combs, portrayed Piper Hallowell. Despite Doherty's past dismissal from 90210, a show produced by Spelling, in a series of past incidents, she was given a second chance. Lori Rahm was initially cast as Phoebe, but withdrew due to conflicts with her religious beliefs. Alyssa Milano, a child star renowned for roles in Who's the Boss in Melrose Place, replaced Rahm. Charmed made its debut with Something Wicca This Way Comes, drawing 7.7 .7 million viewers and setting a record as the WB's highest-rated debut episode. The narrative of Charmed commences with the three Hallowell sisters, Prue, Piper, and Phoebe, coming together six months after their maternal grandmother's death. During their exploration, the youngest sister, Phoebe, stumbles upon an ancient book, The Book of Shadows, in the attic. Reading an incantation unwittingly triggers events that fulfill an ancient prophecy, unveiling the sisters' identity as witches. Discovering their lineage, the sisters realize they come from a long line of powerful witches, tracing back to Melinda Warren, the first burned at the stake in the Salem Witch Trials. Melinda's prophecy foretells the emergence of three sisters, the strongest good witches forming the power of three, the most potent magical force ever. Prue, the oldest sister, develops telekinesis and unexpectedly gains the power of astral projection. Piper, the middle sister, initially freezes time but later evolves to molecular combustion. Phoebe, the youngest, starts with the power of premonition and later gains abilities like levitation and empathic powers. The dynamic shifts when the power of three transformed into the power of two after Shannon Doherty's exit from the show at the end of season three, a topic we'll delve into later. Initially considering recasting, producers approached actresses such as Tiffany Thiessen and Jennifer Love Hewitt, both of whom declined. Opting for a different narrative direction, the character of Prue got written off through her death, paving the way for a new addition to the show. Producers introduced a long-lost younger sister, Paige Matthews, born to Patty and Sam, Patty's guardian angel. Actresses like Sarah Brown, Soleil Moon Fry, Susan Ward, and Eliza Dushku were considered for the role of Paige, but film actress Rose McGowan ultimately secured the part. The show persevered for five more seasons, undergoing time slot changes and reaching its zenith as the highest-rated Sunday night program in the WB's history during its fifth season. The first six seasons of Charmed were filmed at Ray Art Studios in Canoga Park, Los Angeles, before moving to the Paramount Studios lot for seasons 7 and 8. 
the Innes House on Carroll Avenue in Los Angeles served as the exterior for the fictional Hallowell Manor. During its run, the show featured notable music acts, such as Dishwalla, Dave Navarro, and The Cranberries. With 178 episodes, Charmed became the second longest drama on the WB, celebrated for its mix of action, humor, and the portrayal of three resilient women navigating both everyday challenges and supernatural responsibilities. So why is the show so controversial today? The Controversies The show has not escaped controversies, particularly regarding its core concept, which has been accused of being a copyright from the start. In 1996, director Andrew Fleming released the film, The Craft, which, despite mixed reviews, gained popularity and developed a significant cult following. Just two years later, in 1998, Charmed made its debut on the WB, and some argue that this timing may not be coincidental because of similarities between The Craft and Charmed. The Craft, which is one of my all-time favorite movies, revolves around a group of four young outcasts who embrace witchcraft to enhance their lives and seek revenge on their adversaries. On the other hand, Charmed follows three young sisters who discover their family's legacy as witches, uniting their powers in the power of three to do good. Both narratives are steeped in the fashion and music of the mid-late 1990s, cultivating a sense of coolness. Notably, both The Craft and Charmed feature the Smith song How Soon Is Now, covered by the band Love Spit Love, with the latter using it as its opening theme. Director Andrew Fleming suggests that the parallels between The Craft and Charmed may be more intentional than a mere attempt to replicate past success. According to Fleming, after the success of The Craft, he crafted a pilot for a TV series based on the film for Fox. Although Fox declined, the WB expressed interest. Strangely, Fox refused to grant permission for the WB to proceed with the concept. Subsequently, the following year saw the premiere of Charmed on the WB. Notably, The Craft star Robin Tunney has publicly criticized Charmed, labeling it as a ripoff. Let's not overlook the perspective shared by Rachel True, another star from The Craft, regarding her thoughts on Charmed. <laughs> um, I mean, they use the same font, they use the same song, and Aaron Spelling, like, bless his heart, but, like, not exactly, you know, the most, like, let's put black people in all my stuff. Mm -hmm. He made them sisters, so they didn't have to have a black girl on, is my theory. But no, <laughs> I mean, that was, if you look at it, that really sprang up out of The Craft, mm -hmm. um, I think, so. <laughs> The sexualization of women in this show has sparked controversy too. At the outset of the series, female characters were portrayed in conservative attire, long dresses, business suits, work uniforms, loose-fitting clothing, simple sweaters, and a muted color scheme, resulting in a rather lackluster aesthetic. Even the hairstyles and makeup were notably simplistic and conservative. While Phoebe occasionally donned provocative attire and subtle innuendos to sex were present, the portrayal remained relatively politically correct, particularly when considering contemporary standards and the evolution of network television. <laughs> Don't worry. We had safe sex. A lot of safe sex. Ew. Over time, the Hallowell sisters underwent a gradual transformation towards increased sexualization. This transition was evident in specific contexts where they were required to expose more skin and wear increasingly provocative and colorful outfits. In one instance, there was even a suggestion for Holly Marie Combs to wear a big, padded push-up bra. These changes were accompanied by overt allusions to sex, involving characters such as Paige or Phoebe. You can say that the fashion of these women was influenced by the trend at that time and I certainly don't mean to shame these actresses but it looks like they were not used to enhance the storyline, but rather to appeal to a specific demographic. Did we really need that shot? Does it seem normal to you that Paige shows up completely soaked at her workplace and wrings out her shirt in front of her boss? In a 2021 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, writer and producer Krista Vernoff revealed that she departed Charmed after three seasons because the network consistently requested reasons to incorporate scantily clad scenes for the stars into the scripts. In a 2021 article for The Hollywood Reporter, Vernoff stated, I signed on because 
Charmed was a girl power show. And about halfway through, there was an episode where Alyssa Milano comes out in Mermaid Pasties. And there was a huge spike in male viewership. Then every episode after, the question would come from the network, you know, how are we getting the girls naked this week? And they were throwing money at me and the number keeps going up and there's all this pressure. And all I can think is, yeah, I'm creating something that's now bad for the world. And I've had enough bad for the world in my life. In the middle of season six, the creation of the magic school became a necessity due to budget constraints. Producers opted for cost-cutting measures by constructing a single set for continuous shooting, eliminating the need for frequent location changes. As the seventh season concluded, there were speculations that the show might not return for an eighth season, primarily due to the expiration of the main trio's contracts. Eventually, an eighth season was greenlit, but not without significant conditions. Mandatory budget reductions led to the departure of Dorian Gregory, portraying Daryl Morris, and the demotion of Brian Krause, who played the beloved character Leo Wyatt, Piper's husband. Financial constraints dictated that he could not be featured in all 22 episodes, resulting in the freezing of Brian's character in episode 10, only to return for the series finale. The crescendo of controversy in Charm's narrative reached its zenith in 2001 with the unexpected departure of Shannon Doherty. The circumstances surrounding her exit have been shrouded in speculation, with persistent rumors of a feud with Alyssa Milano. As the echoes of past tensions resurface, a comprehensive retrospective analysis becomes imperative, inviting a nuanced exploration of the events from the diverse perspectives of those involved. Revisiting the drama as a timeline Throughout the eight-season run of the show, both on-screen and off-screen drama was abundant. Despite airing its last episode in 2006, Charm's co-star's conflicts continue to make headlines. Most recently, Milano denied involvement in Shannon's firing, prompting an emotional response from Doherty. Let's delve into the behind-the-scenes events. During the first season, Combs underwent surgery for a uterine tumor, causing a two-week production shutdown. Combs praised the cast's support, stating, All of us got very close during this time. Shannon would leave my hospital room and Alyssa and her mom would come in. When I went home, Alyssa's mom had made me chicken soup and food for the week because it was a really major surgery. The girls really pulled together during this time for me. However, in her podcast, Doherty later presented a different version of events, alleging that Milano and her mother prevented her from visiting Combs, causing a strained relationship in season two. And there was also competitiveness about you, which was really interesting, of, you know, trying to pull you away from me and 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 that you know transpired in that second season and it was I know for me it was an incredibly rough season you know you were going through health stuff you were in the hospital and my dad had been as you know in and out of the hospital nonstop and hospitals scared me to death and I you know waited 24 hours after your surgery to go Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't even easy for me to get in. I was like being told I couldn't even get in <laughs> by like fun. Alyssa and her mom. Like they were blocking people from seeing you. And at the time you didn't know. And I remember yeah. you texted me and were like, dude, are you going to come to see me? <laughs> and I could feel like your, you know, your pain of feeling like I had abandoned you. Milano's mother, Lynn, countered this narrative, vehemently rejecting the story and questioning the practicality of blocking Shannon from entering a hospital room. Lynn also challenged Doherty's claim of attempts to create tension on the charm set. She clarified that she couldn't have interfered behind the scenes, emphasizing her limited presence on set and her own business commitments. Lynn underscored her close friendship with Combs, deepening during Combs' pregnancy. In 2001, Shannon Doherty bid farewell to Charmed, leaving an indelible mark with her departure. Her final episode, directed by Doherty herself, showcased her exceptional talent as an actress. The culmination of this episode left fans in suspense with a cliffhanger ending, leaving them pondering the future of the show. Doherty's character, the leader of the trio, was not just a pivotal figure but also the heart of the series. The show's reputation had been significantly built upon her shoulders, and her absence left fans saddened, questioning the direction the show would take without its central force. 
Here's what Doherty told Entertainment Tonight right after she announced her exit from the series. There was too much drama on the set and not enough passion for the work. I want to work with actors who really, really care and that want to be there every single day. I don't want to work with people who bitch about their job and complain about it and say that, you know, they hate it or anything else. In an EW interview preceding season four, Milano expressed remorse over Doherty's departure. I'm, I'm very laid back and passive. I have my Buddha. I think it's unfortunate that she left and that she needed to badmouth everyone involved and the audience. Um, she sounds really angry. I just hope I didn't contribute to that anger. Combs reflected on the tragic death of Shannon's character at the end of the season, stating, We should have had an opportunity to have her character make a graceful exit. And our story writers should have properly planned for that. Later, when Shannon Doherty paid a visit to Howard Stern to promote her Playboy photo shoot, here's what she said. There were times when we were great, but I think if you stick three girls on a show together, three girls who are all attractive. I, I think that there tends to be a little bit of drama. You know, three is an odd number. There's always one person left out. That's right. So, um, you know, if if somebody was left out, then then there was drama about it. Who was the biggest star on that show? You or Alyssa Milano? I think that we were equal. Equal? Yeah. She was from Who's the Boss? I, absolutely. And you were on Beverly Hills 90210? Very equal. And I think the dynamic between uh, that show wouldn't have been as successful with just me. It wouldn't have been as successful with just Alyssa. It was the combination. And I gotta be honest with you, I think Rose McGowan is doing an unbelievable unbelievable job. But and that could be you beautiful. doing that unbelievable job. But it's not for me, you but know. That's like, your show. Why, why would is you it you? You always have to leave. So you're the one who leaves. I, I don't I, I think that's good though. I mean, isn't it good to, to leave a show on a really wealthy? high are you very wealthy? I, I have. I, you have enough f you money. Yeah. You do. All yeah. right. That's the. That's what we're getting to here. You <laughs> don't need to work. So the series extended for an additional five seasons. Frankly, following Prue's departure, even though the audience stuck around, the show seemed to lose its edge, particularly after season four. Paige's introduction as the long lost sister had potential, but her telekinetic abilities paled in comparison to Prue's and failed to evolve as the show progressed. It felt as though they hastily integrated her into the Hallowell family. Moreover, the overall tone of the show took a nosedive into excessive childishness, transforming from a series tailored for teenagers into essentially a program geared toward very young children. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Tell me about it. The once thought-provoking narrative gave way to episodes that were downright silly, featuring absurd storylines, uninspiring situations, and a conspicuous absence of references to Wiccan or witchcraft elements. The sophistication and depth that once defined the show were replaced by a noticeable decline in quality, catering to a much younger and less discerning audience. In 2006, the show concluded, and each cast member ventured down their path. Holly Marie Combs found a role in Pretty Little Liars, Alyssa Milano explored various projects, navigating both successes and setbacks. Rose McGowan followed a similar trajectory, participating in films like Grindhouse and Conan. Shannon Doherty, on the other hand, took a more typical route for Has Beans. She posed for Playboy, once again. She dove into a reality show offering breakup advice, probably because she had been married and divorced twice by then. There was also a brief stint on Dancing with the Stars, an attempt at authoring a book with a limited audience, and a heavily scripted reality show documenting her third wedding likely driven by financial reasons. Despite another reality show with Holly Marie Combs, Doherty's talent seemed to be overshadowed by a challenging reputation, leading to media scrutiny. Shannon Doherty fights with everybody. Everybody fights with Shannon Doherty. She's a bad, bad girl. She obviously woke up on the wrong side of the bed every morning of her life. Shannon Doherty is a spoiled brat. I mean, you know how many actresses would love to have the opportunities that she's had? Even her return as Brenda Walsh in Beverly Hills 90210 spin-off called 90210 and another short-lived, low-budget, uninteresting spin-off simply called BH90210 was not without rumors of drama circulating. The good news? Well, social media hinted at a more positive relationship between Shannon Doherty and Alyssa Milano, as depicted in these tweets. 
Like, I need to know if Alyssa Milano and Shannon Doherty ever made up. No reason to not make up. I think she's great. Back at you. I hope you're well and happy. I would definitely do a Charmed movie. Would you? Yep, I would. Enough was left undone to address and make a good movie. The dynamics shifted in 2013 when Doherty, who had previously praised Milano and even agreed to a Charmed movie with her, expressed a change in her sentiments. Hey, nice things about Alyssa Milano. <laughs> Positive. Um, pretty. Um, uh, uh, pretty. Um, uh, pretty. On Watch What Happens Live, Milano says she doesn't really know what happened with Doherty's departure. She said, I don't know if she got fired. We never really found out what happened. I can tell you that we were on the air with her for three years, and there were definitely some rough days. Doherty, who was, at that time, promoting her reality show with Combs, addressed Milano's comments on Sway. Three times that are rough. Whether, whether somebody wants to say that that's high school, their their definition of high school, or maybe what high school was like for them, mm -hmm. versus somebody else just saying like, eh, you know, sometimes you don't always get along with the person 24-7 that you work with. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't go to high school. What are we talking about here? <laughs> mm. Well, I think she felt uncomfortable because you guys are best buddies. Uh, no, no, actually, no, no. That that was, was, you know, her mother was at my wedding. Like, why are we even, <laughs> why? Yeah. You know, yeah. I. We were all friends, and at times we weren't. So, that's, yeah. In 2017, Doherty joyfully declared that her breast cancer, diagnosed in 2015, had gone into remission. Milano shared that any past issues between them were resolved, emphasizing the changing impact of time and life experiences. I think we're just at ages now that what happens 15 years ago, or however long ago that was, it's irrelevant. Milano told E! Entertainment she expressed happiness for Doherty's well-being, sharing that she had prayed for her every day and looked forward to seeing her. Then, the Harvey Weinstein scandal erupted, and all eyes turned to Rose McGowan, who initiated the revelation and was one of Weinstein's victims. Simultaneously, Alyssa Milano tweeted a request for survivors of harassment or assault to respond with hashtag MeToo, igniting a widespread movement. Milano's ongoing friendship with Georgina Chapman, Harvey Weinstein's wife, despite her support for MeToo, triggered an intense response from McGowan, expressing disgust and accusing Milano of co-opting the movement. You make me want to vomit. You actually gave me a body flashback. Well done, thick one. The drama persisted, with McGowan criticizing Milano's political affiliations, alleging Milano created a toxic work environment on the Charmed set, and claiming Milano stole the Me Too movement from activist Tarana Burke. You stole a Me Too, a brilliant communication tool, not a movement, from Tarana. You co-opted my movement, The Cultural Reset, for fame, jealous of me for outing my rapist. You made 250 k per week on Charmed. You threw a fit in front of the crew, yelling, They don't pay me enough to do this <laughs> Appalling behavior on the daily. I cried every time we got renewed because you made that set toxic AF. Now, get off my coattails, you <laughs> fraud. What the hell is going on? In 2020, Doherty revealed the return of her breast cancer, now at stage 4. By June 2023, she shared that the cancer had spread to her brain and was terminal. Despite the grim prognosis, Doherty remained optimistic, expressing a determination to continue living, loving, and creating. One of her ongoing projects was a podcast called Let's Be Clear. In December 2023, in a two-part episode of Let's Be Clear, Doherty and Combs discussed what they believed was Doherty's firing from Charmed, allegedly at Milano's behest. Doherty attributed the rift to competitiveness, highlighting a lack of female support between Milano and herself during the show's early years. On February 3, 2024, at a panel at Orlando Megacon, Milano refuted Doherty and Combs' claims, asserting that the show hired a third-party mediator due to a challenging on-set atmosphere.
Following that, Milano took to her Instagram account and posted an extensive response. I don't know one other show that has had the success that Charmed had, where the cast still speaks ill of the experience a quarter of a century later. This is 15 movies and 13 TV shows ago for me. This was 11 years before my 15-year marriage and 13 years before having my first child. This was so long ago that any retelling of these stories from anyone is just revisionist history. I will add, though, with absolute certainty, everything was documented. There was a professional mediator. I was told Holly and Shannon would not participate in any mediation. And an on-set producer babysitter who were both brought in to investigate all claims. It was then recommended by this mediator after collecting testimony from cast and crew what changes should be made if the show was going to continue. The studio, Aaron Spelling, and Network made the decision to protect the international hit that was charmed. I did not have the power to get anyone fired. Once Shannon left, we had five more successful seasons, and I'm forever grateful. Also, footnote, I have the same attorney now that I had then. He's been my attorney since I was 19. As always, I wish Holly, Shannon, and Rose peace and light in their personal and professional journeys. We all have bigger demons to fight. Doherty, reacting strongly to Milano's post, did not take it well and tearfully read her response during a convention conveying her emotions while reading the heartfelt message she had composed on her phone. Holly and I, we were not me on the podcast, my podcast, let's be clear. In fact, we went in and we edited out anything that we felt would cause more drama. We simply told the truth because the truth actually does matter. But we wanted to try to save you, the fans, from heartbreak as much as humanly possible. At this point in my life, with my health diagnosis, I'm sorry if I start crying, with fighting horrific disease every day of my life, it is also incredibly important to me that the truth actually be told, as opposed to the narrative that others have put out there for me. We told it together, we told our truth, and we are standing by our truths. There is no revisionist history happening in the truth that I know we told. There is no brush flinging or shoe flinging. There is no lateness to set. There is no mediator for months on end. I recall the facts as if I were still living in them. And what I will say is what somebody else may call drama is an actual trauma for me that I have lived with for an extremely long time. And it is only through my battle with cancer that I decided to address this trauma and be open and honest about it so that I could actually heal from a livelihood that was taken away from me, a livelihood that was taken away from my family because someone else wanted to be number one on the call sheet. That is the truth. Thank you very much. Now, let's read Milano's comment section on her Instagram post. I have known you for years now. You are hardworking, a great mother, a gifted actor and writer, a hell of a strategist and organizer always fighting for the betterment of people's lives and just a very cool and pleasant person. There is no use rehashing the past. It's gone. Wishing you and the whole cast the best. You made a beloved show together and you all mean so much to its fans. Alyssa, as an experienced makeup artist, I have to express how wonderful it is to work with someone as positive and pleasant as you. Your warmth stands out, especially after dealing with the challenges of working with the actress, whose name starts with an S. People who know you, know you. My two cents. When I worked on Charm for one episode, I was so young and green as an actor that I didn't know what Mark was and I didn't know what a blocking rehearsal was. I was a deer in the headlights. Alyssa was patient and nice to me the whole time in spite of my obvious shortcomings. I do remember there was some drama between the leads on the show, but I had no idea what was going on and I certainty wasn't looped in. A couple of years later, I worked with Alyssa again on a pilot. We played siblings and she did everything she could to make everyone feel comfortable on set and worked to foster an environment where everyone thrived. I really don't know what happened on Charmed, but I know my experiences with Alyssa have been nothing but positive. I will also say one more thing. 
the intense expectation and power experienced by young stars, which all three sisters were on Charmed, doesn't always bring out the best in anyone. People in their 20s are really not emotionally equipped to handle that success and pressure. 25 years later, no one should be doing anything but forgiving and moving on. I am so sorry you still must address this subject so many years later. I remain inspired by your ability to handle it all with such grace and compassion. I certainly do not have that skill, and it's one of the many beautiful things I envy about you. If only Mr. Spelling and the studio had hired a neutral third party to investigate and determine the source of the unrest and the cause of the hostile workplace. That way, independent research could be done. This team could have interviewed eye-ear witnesses in the cast and crew and made a recommendation based on their findings. Maybe they could have had an influence on how to handle the poor behavior and bullying that took place. Oh wait, that happened. Got it. If only there was a pattern we could look at. For example, if similar behavior or consequences had existed before or after, then we might be able to find a common denominator. Oh, wait. If only you had had the courage to own your part in this whole drama and had apologized in an effort to move forward. Oh, wait. So maybe it's best if we put this topic to rest. Even if we might need a listener's boost in a podcast. It's tired. It gives, Aston answered. I love you, Alyssa Milano. I served as a set customer throughout the entire show, and the only actress who was genuinely cool was Alyssa. You were consistently friendly, always engaging in conversation whenever our paths crossed. In contrast, the other three actresses were distant and wouldn't even make eye contact during our interactions. There was a great deal of bullying on that set, and you were not one of the bullies, plain and simple. They can spin it how they want to, but it's spin. Krista, you know none of which you speak. Remember, this show is bad for the world anyway. I am so confused. Maybe you can enlighten me. In 2020, Holly and you seemed really happy to be reunited and work again together in Grey's Anatomy. I don't understand why four years later, Holly is showing animosity against you. I don't understand and it's heartbreaking. I don't either. Apparently it has something to do with my uncle Mitch passing and she was upset that my best friend reached out to her with this news. This was the man I resuscitated on the side of the freeway after his heart attack. I was not in the headspace to make phone calls to anyone but his close friends and relatives. Bull but if you want to know why you know my number, it's the same number you texted three hours ago. Wish this is what you would do with Holly Marie Combs and Shannon Doherty and Rose McGowan, but y'all play all day on social media. Where's the grown woman sit down? The face to face? Let's be clear. I'm game. Alyssa even mentioned that she invited Shannon for coffee when she was first diagnosed in 2015, but Shannon refused and later blocked her on Twitter. Then, Holly Marie Combs posted this. In the spirit of not being the quiet one or the middle child anymore, I feel the need to defend myself. After the many continuing attacks that have ensued since Alyssa stepped out on the stage and essentially called Shannon and I liars when she was simply asked what it was like to work with Rose, Suffice it to say, I'm a little shocked and a little disappointed by the things she posted the next day while texting me simultaneously words to the contrary. Sadly, that's not surprising anymore. But I was raised to be a fighter. First off, this is not revisionist history. This is just the history she didn't want people to know about and the history Shannon wasn't ready to talk about until one month ago. Although I have long wanted the girls to just get along for the sake of something bigger than all of us combined, it was not in the cards, clearly. We are all very different and equally headstrong, which was the essence of charm to begin with. We are all thankfully at the age where people are writing books, memoirs, and telling their life story. No one should have to lie about their own life for the comfort of another. Although I have long wanted the girls to just get along for the sake of something bigger than all of us combined, it was not in the cards. Clearly, we are all very different and equally headstrong, which was the essence of Charmin to begin with. I often yelled at one or the other to lay off the other, many a time as Alyssa and Rose can attest to. And this was after Charmed. Being the middle child sucks. And it was in that interest of family that I tried to shield the audience from our differences to protect something that did indeed and still does have a heartbeat of its own. 
Case in point, when Shannon and I went to dinner in Florida this week, and the host wanted to tell us how the show saved his life, that the show actually helped get him through a very dark time in his life. It's people like him that make all the blood, sweat, and many tears very much worth it for me still to this day and in this hour. It's stories like his that made me not want to address this story. But alas, it's not my nature to cower in a corner. And I have a big problem with injustice. I heard that Alyssa said she did not have the power to dire anyone, which is ironic because this was actually all about power. But let's go with that and let me explain what she did have the power to do. She had the power to stop the process at any time. She had the power to not talk to the mediator therapist brought on to protect profits. As I refuse to speak to him because I go to work to do my job not to talk about my feelings with a strange man, no other cast member was interviewed to my knowledge or crew. And frankly, the only regular characters we had at the time in question were Brian and Julian, who were both dating one or the other, so I doubt their testimonials would be all that valid in any case. But there was a case being built, which is now clear, a case Alyssa and Alyssa alone had the power to stop. And when the producers said, okay, we will let Shannon go, Alyssa had the power to say, no, I don't want that. She had the power to say no, just as Shannon had said, no, I don't want you to replace Alyssa when posed with the same option because she was a child actor who supported a family just as Alyssa does and understood the great importance and responsibility of that. Even now, this pains me to write. It was heartbreaking then and still now. And I think a lot of the blame still remains with the producers who knew it was easier to keep us divided as opposed to united. Three broken pieces were easier to control and manipulate than one united front which would have been more costly and cut into their precious profit margin. But in the end, it all worked out as destiny would have it. And we all got Rose, who was a beacon in a dark time for me. And we went on to develop a deep, surprising, and supportive connection that continues to this day, just as Paige and Piper did. And now Rose and Shannon have a growing friendship and support system, all their own, which makes my little black heart glow. It's a full circle moment for me. So I will say, don't despair our charm family. You are actually our only common denominator. We are still a family of survivors and we always will be, truly. Charmed was made for all of you. And lastly, the truth of the matter is, we all are, despite our differences, incredibly grateful for this dysfunctional family in every way. The end. Well, let's just say all hell is broken loose. challenging year for Shannon Doherty marked by her arrest for DUI, a Los Angeles County judge mandated either a $5,400 payment or 540 hours of community service, following her no-contest plea to a vandalism charge. Doherty duly fulfilled the penalty, completing anger management counseling as required by the court. The media, however, mercilessly ridiculed her, questioning the efficacy of the counseling she had undergone before. In the mid-90s, suggesting it was ineffective and subjecting her to public mockery. Amidst these personal struggles, there was an evident strain in the relationship between Alyssa Milano and Shannon Doherty that originated during the filming of season two and escalated throughout season three. Speculation abounded, with some suggesting Milano's alleged diva behavior, seeking more scenes and higher pay, as a potential source of conflict. Other theories implicated Doherty's envy of Milano's rising fame, characterized by magazine covers, lucrative brand deals with Candy's jeans and Candy's fragrances, and even a cameo in Blink 182's music video for Josie, alongside a prominent role in season 3. If these speculations hold true, it appears perplexing, considering Doherty's character held a central and captivating role, enjoying compelling storylines and wielding potent abilities. 
despite these achievements, she unexpectedly surpassed Phoebe in combat prowess, making any potential rivalry seemingly unfounded. So, was Milano the mastermind behind Doherty's departure? Milano staunchly refutes having such influence while Combs acknowledges that Milano possessed the authority to prompt Doherty's exit. What's the reality? Milano, sensing bullying, proactively reached out to the show's production, building a case and compiling evidence. This wasn't driven by jealousy but rather a response to feeling mistreated. In any workplace where you feel hindered by a colleague's bullying or any other issue, taking a stand and reporting it to the appropriate authorities, as Alyssa did, is a reasonable course of action. If this results in termination, it speaks volumes about the severity of the problem. One of the most astonishing revelations from Combs and Doherty's podcast conversation is the fact that Combs was essentially blackmailed into staying uncharmed after Doherty's departure. The difficulty of such a situation is undoubtedly immense, raising eyebrows at the peculiar circumstances that surrounded it. Adding to the intrigue, it's perplexing that Combs was allowed to take on a producer role despite these contentious dynamics. I can relate to Doherty's challenges, but as I tune into her podcast, my admiration for her as a celebrity takes a hit, and let me clarify that this has nothing to do with her political views on the Gaza situation, which I find appalling. Mainly, she has a tendency to deflect responsibility for her past blunders, consistently casting herself as the victim. For instance, she attributes her ousting from Beverly Hills not to unprofessional behavior like last-minute haircuts and occasional physical altercations with co-stars, but rather to her marriage to a man with his own set of issues. While the sudden termination was undeniably unfair, she didn't make an effort to reach out to anyone from the show to explain or seek support. Moreover, when not laying blame, Doherty often resorts to tears or adopting the victim role. It's like her go-to move, whether it's a coping mechanism. Or she's genuinely more emotional than we realized. So, Doherty's sudden resurgence of anger, after a 10-year hiatus of silence, raises questions about her motivations and intentions. What happened? And what about Combs? It appears she's playing a bit of a double game here. After working alongside Milano for eight years on Charm, she never uttered a negative word about her. Not once. But now, she's hinting that Milano was not so nice. When things were going south on Charm, Combs didn't speak up or say anything, not even for her friend Doherty. Yes, she couldn't leave the show without facing a blacklist, but she didn't take a stand or try to work out a solution through the mediator. Why? She doesn't offer any explanation. While Doherty has every right to share her thoughts given what she's been through, it seems like Combs changes her stance frequently, and that's part of the problem. When Doherty was undergoing treatment for breast cancer, Combs aligned herself with Milano, even making a guest appearance on Grey's Anatomy with her. She supported Milano during the early stages of hashtag MeToo and various other occasions on Twitter. Now, she's back to being friends with Doherty, doing conventions with her and being a guest on her podcast. Call it what you want, but Combs seems unclear about where she stands and should have been much more vocal about Doherty's departure when it really mattered. I, for one, wouldn't want a friend like her, and I certainly won't idolize people who tailor their narrative depending on their audience. Despite claims from Doherty, Combs, and McGowan, there's no corroborating evidence from other actors who've worked with Milano over the years. If Milano truly had a problematic reputation, it's logical to expect professional consequences like being fired or blacklisted. Unlike Doherty, who explored reality shows and various ventures post-charmed, Milano thrived in her career as an actress, TV host, and political activist. Milano's commitment to a positive work environment is evident in her annual tradition of hosting gatherings with former Charmed crew members at her home. Conversely, despite Doherty's undeniable talent, she gained a reputation for not being particularly kind to the crew. <laughs> okay, so... So... Do you guys not realize that we're actually rolling? Be quiet! From my perspective, Shannon Doherty appears to be contending with a trauma that predates her interactions with Alyssa Milano. Achieving global stardom at the age of 20, Doherty faced challenges such as the notorious I Hate Brenda book, authored by two disgruntled writers. Moreover, an unfortunate nightclub incident led to a confrontation and a subsequent lawsuit. 
these experiences, coupled with her dismissal from Charmed, enduring public ridicule, witnessing a decline in her post-Charmed career, going through three divorces, facing limited work opportunities, not receiving the recognition she deserves, and battling illness, have undeniably created an exceptionally challenging environment for her. No one deserves such a burdensome journey. No one. Expressing frustrations by targeting a former co-star with whom she seemingly had amicable interactions just a few years ago, as indicated by her past tweets, may not be the most constructive solution. Attempting to rewrite the past and shifting responsibility for one's circumstances might offer temporary relief, but it fails to address the underlying issues or contribute to personal growth. Additionally, involving a friend in throwing shade at a show from which she continues to profit through conventions, lacks a certain level of classiness. They're getting ready to start the first three years of Charmed. Okay, so we're gonna, and only the first three years. Then we're there's gonna just turn it off. Years? There wasn't more than three years, right? I don't well, think there's so three really. years in a reboot. <laughs> Here's what I hope for. I really wish Alyssa would agree to be on Shannon's podcast, even if it's just a distant dream. And more than that, I want Alyssa, Shannon, Holly, and Rose to sit down and talk about everything. If they're going to share their problems with the world, they should tell the whole story, without leaving out any nasty details. How about a Netflix documentary? It could have stories from people who worked with them, and it would be interesting. The women of Charm owe this to their fans and to everyone who loves pop culture. I worry that the recent controversies may permanently tarnish the once positive image of this show which originally celebrated sisterhood and female empowerment, rather than promoting female rivalry or pettiness. It's disheartening that instead of recognizing the influence of Charmed on pop culture, and its impact on a generation unfamiliar with a long-running series led by a powerful trio of women, it may now be remembered as a colossal clash of personalities or an ego-driven conflict. Charmed fans deserve better.